on really on helping keep families united and, and I would help with giving answers that certain people were looking for and so it won't be totally like that but if you're familiar with that that uh, organization but it would be kind of similar to um, life coaching and and kind of a support group um, so if you're someone in that age group and in a community and and you you know you've you felt suffering like I have at some parts of my life um, you, you would be more than welcome to if you need any terms of help or um, advice or, or support that diversity inclusion would also um, fit into that category as well. Um, housing support services that kind of goes down the list a little bit longer here. That would basically um, kind of really target um, precisely people who are um, aged out foster youth. So your, your people who are over then uh, 18 plus who would not have um who might not have resources or financing for housing and, and would, would maybe need a bridge or a help um, to, get, to get to that next part of their, their life um, when, you know, they, they age out of the foster care system. Um, and we would also be providing some help there um, in terms of that, that area as well um, through volunteering. And, and then again, if a group were to form the volunteering would be between once or twice a month, depending on, how this could work around people's schedules and, and uh, having the chance to not only to have a group, but um, having people know um, when when those issues arise and how we can help. Um, so we'll be talking to also other um, NGOs, different types of groups out there that are specific to these issues that we would be in touch with. So that's how that would work. And, um, and that is about, if I go through the rest here, um, as I discussed earlier, uh, specific goals and outreach will be more of your higher learning institutions, um, et cetera. I know where I currently go to school now, um, thanks to COVID, everything is currently online. But, um, and through, through Zoom, um, I know right now where I go to, go to college, there is that there, um, <coughs> excuse me, there's an independent LGBTQ plus um, group. Um, of students and but everything is through zoom and it I, it would be nice eventually to have it in person obviously um, so I will be also continuing with uh, that group there at my college and and just seeing if maybe some people there might be interested um, and generally that's where this is really going to form it's going to form from higher learning institutions if you know someone in your family you know that fits this category that would also help to uh, recommend them to DNI and um, I will let you continue, um, and then I, at the end, okay. I think we'll give the contact, the email that I have. Sure. I wanted to stress some yep. of your groups here and, and go into a little more detail in some of these, too, with you. Um, mm -hmm. For example, I can, I can give you an example with uh, the uh, some of the people that have been volunteering with us in MAC, that's the Housing Coalition, uh, we had... Uh, we have some, we've had some tragic things happen, and, and this is released kind of to the housing support services and the age out foster youth. We have openings right now. We can house people. If we have young people that are qualified, okay, that uh, need housing and can do some work, then, then we have uh, people that they can help take care of and on a part-time basis in exchange for their, basically their room and board almost. Uh, and these are older people who need someone to drive them to go get their groceries, take them to a doctor's appointment or whatever, and in return uh, they provide them a place to live, a private room usually, and of their own. And or even sometimes they have, we've even got some, they got two and three people living in the same house and providing services to multiple elderly people or people that are need support services, these people who maybe have medical conditions or whatever. And we've been doing that for a lot of long time, and that's through the housing coalition. Uh, but the we're finding, you know, it's it's difficult to get people screened right now with COVID, and also we're concerned too because God forbid we wouldn't want to take anyone into someone's home, and then have someone end up with COVID. So now we're requiring all the youth that come through and actually go into the homes or anything must be COVID tested, and we're requiring them to get tested before they do they go in and do anything. We're trying to get access to these rapid test kits so we can do part of the testing, you know, and that's just, that's just something that recently happened here, which will help speed things up. And um, that's something that's like it's in, I think it's 15 minutes. You can know if you're positive or with it or anything. 
And so that's something that we're hoping to get get a hold of, but they're in such short supply, and it's almost impossible to get a hold of them. But we're talking to some of our NGO allies and hoping we can get those to help help with the people that are do, doing work for us right now. And um, but uh, many of the people have e- individual issues they're dealing with too. And I wanted to go over the uh, our emergency relocation sanctuary services is something that often gets people confused. And um, this, again, is coming through the Housing Coalition. And uh, these are people, just like you mentioned earlier, the people who have come through abusive relationships often are in, believe it or not, Tyler, I don't know if you realize this, or people or even our listeners realize this, but there are arranged marriages in the United States, even though it's supposed to be illegal, that because of the cultures, People who come from the Middle Eastern countries, the Far Eastern countries over there, they still do arrange marriages and try to force their children to marry who the family selects for them. And this is a real nightmare for a lot of younger people because in many cases they don't even know the person. Even worse, some of the girls are, of course, way younger than the men. The men can be 20 or 30 years older than the girls. It's just it's just unbelievable. And then because they're they're paid a dowry and everything, but that's part of the people that come in through the emergency and sanctuary services that we have offered for years. Uh, we've helped quietly and through some of our NGO partners house these people over the years and provide them sanctuary so that they are literally some of them are literally fleeing for their lives because their families are have these quote honor killings because if you don't marry the person the family tells them to, they threaten to kill you literally. And that happens today, happens in the United States of America. We also have people that are fleeing religious cults here. I can name some. In fact, we have one of them right up here in Clearwater, the, the headquarters for one, one of the most awful cults there is in the country. And the horror stories have been documented by them. And uh, Clearwater, Florida, look, look it up online. People who don't know who I'm talking about, you can certainly find out. And, boy, I can, we, there's been all kinds of documentaries done on television about the group and what they've done and some of the horrors they have uh, taken and done. Um, anyway, but back more on, on the support group here for DNI, uh, diversity inclusion. Uh, there mm-hmm. is such a broad group of people this, this will include here. And that's why, you know, what you're offering to do, Tyler, is so good and so important for, for, the, for the group because the group needs people to, to go out and step out in front and try to unify them and get them to provide the services. Many of the NGOs we have here are not set up to provide these specified services. And even if it is, there's often waiting lists. Just like the housing. The housing is an absolute nightmare trying to get housing here for its affordable, attainable or affordable housing. It, it's really a serious situation. Uh, I was just reading a report here, and you might find this interesting, that on this is the kids that are under 18 that are in foster care. They have, they have no place to put them, and they, ha- and they had a group home with 30 bunks in it, okay, and they've had to close it down because of all the complaints they got about it and other issues. I won't go into all that here because it's take, it'll take too long, but it, there, is a, there is a tremendous need. As I'm just trying to tell people and our listeners that what you're doing is needed, and it's needed by a lot of different people to help them. So we're really hopeful. We know it's going to take a while to get the group totally established and and functioning for the younger group especially, and uh, and we're hoping to redirect some of the younger people into the group as well, who we are in contact with now, and once especially once the COVID lifts. But hopefully, maybe they can attend some of the meetings via Zoom, uh, even with COVID in place right now. Um, Tyler, where are some of the – you mentioned yeah. higher learning places here. We we need to close up here, and I know you're coming back next week, so we'll close here and then we'll pick up again. But uh, mm-hmm. tell us – just summarize a little bit here in the last two minutes we have here, some of your thoughts, and then before we close out this segment this week. Yeah, and um, so some of the closing thoughts here, and, and um, you made some really outstanding points earlier. Um some of the higher learning institutions that I'd be visiting are currently where I go to school. Um, at, at, um, uh, I'm currently at Hillsborough Community College for now. Uh, before I transfer out, I will be trying to speak to some people there. Um, I know, like I mentioned earlier, there's a group of, of people um, that, that kind of fit the description that, that DNI will serve and help um, there currently, and then also some other different higher learning institutions 
um, around the area that I, I have a few of the names of in my head right now. But um, time will tell, as you mentioned, um, you know, it, it will take time to get a group together. I don't, you know, at, right now I will keep hope that it will be a success, um, but um, I will do everything I can in the, in the coming days to try to get it there. And if it turns out that it, it isn't, I will continue my work um, and, and, and it is, we'll continue your work and everybody else will um, continue uh, to try to help in any way possible. Um, I wanted to, um, let me just look here at, oh, oh, um, yeah, you're, I have an email, quick, yeah, I have an email. Give us the email here and you can spell that out, that'd be great, okay, that people can contact yeah. you. It for this, this is again the 18 to 30 group here for the LGBTQ mm -hmm. youth or young adult. I'm sorry, young adult. Uh, tell us that email if you could, please. Yeah, sure. Um, so it's all um, lowercase i d um, and i. So d and i um, and, and a and d for and d and i um, ready um, r e a d y 35 at gmo.com and I can repeat that that would be D and I ready 35 at gmo.com and that is basically the email that um, the professional email that I'll be using um, if people are interested and we'll see where, where things go from here um, and I think that that's a good point of contact as of now yeah, I'm gonna read it one more time then we gotta close mm -hmm. That's yes. D A N D I R E A D Y thirty five at gmail dot com, and and if, and if anybody yes. misses it, tune in next week because we'll give it again next week. And thank you so much, Tyler. We got to close now, and we're looking forward to talking to you next week. Okay, thank you for thank listening. You for having we you. hope you. Is it great? Okay, thank you for listening, and hope you have enjoyed today's discussion. This has been Coastal Progressive. Rainbow Forum on Society Bites Radio, and I have been your host, Steve Ryan.